I, I shoot on DSLR as well, and you've sort of laughed me in the DSLR experience these years, but just to speak to you when I first got into... I don't laugh at you. I'm very impressed with I didn't say skill. laugh. I said lapped me. You, you oh, lapped. The past. Um, gotcha. You would never laugh at me, right? Um, <laughs> not in public. <laughs> not in public. Thank you. Hey everyone, it's Jay Su coming to you with a very special video. So as of this recording right now, I am in the middle of Orange Grove Dance's summer intensive. It's a week long, 2 to almost 10 p.m. every day, packed with technique and rep and creating your own solo and music composition and lighting and a lot of other bonus content. So it's a very busy week. Uh, but as part of that also, Matt and Colette, the artistic directors, have started this new web conversation live stream series called coffee with collaborators where they talk to different artists they've worked with in the past and they just sit down and chat and talk about life their practice as artists and whatever else comes up so i had the honor of being the very first one i also helped them set everything up on Streamyard, so that's probably probably also partly why <laughs> uh but i got to talk with matt and we and we talked about how i started in video and photography we talked about things to look for in a camera and camera tips and a lot of other stuff around dance film and dance photography. So I thought it was a great conversation. I'm going to play a little clip of this here. And if you're interested in hearing the full conversation, I'll put a link to that in the description below to their YouTube video or their Facebook video. And again, quick plug, they were using StreamYard. We were going to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. It's very easy to use. So check out my video about StreamYard if you're interested in learning more. All right. And with that, I'll see you next time. Should I clap it out still? I also think it's interesting how like some photographers who aren't familiar with dance um, don't always catch like the the peak moments, the best moments. And then on the flip side, oftentimes dancers who aren't familiar with being the subject, especially in like a more like a photo shoot situation, they often forget that we're trying to capture movement and then they'll go for just static images. And a lot of times I have to coach them to like think about moving through this shape and I'll catch that moment versus trying to like hold that one static thing and then it doesn't look as energetic as it could have been. So I just random thought like just popped up. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, I so uh, we both shoot Canon. Um, so and that just happened to be the brand that when I was first starting, I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, this looks like it works and I'll go with it. And I've stuck with this since because I I like their stuff. Uh, but I started with the Canon Rebel T3i which is like their consumer level, entry level DSLR. And then I eventually upgraded to a Canon 80D. And then I currently use a Canon 5D Mark IV. So I've always stayed with DSLRs and I haven't moved to uh, a medium format camera or like a cinema camera. I, I like DSLRs and it's a, I currently have a full frame. Where it's, oh, this, I don't know how technical to get with the, <laughs> but- Go for um, it. But uh, I decided to stick with DSLRs because I like the flexibility of being able to do both video and photography. Um, I actually enjoy photography more than video, so I've always leaned toward that. But um, DSLRs nowadays have so much capability when it comes to video that I was like, whatever I need to do, minus maybe filming a full evening length work, you know, I can do it with my DSLR. Um, and then there are some workarounds now that I figured out with my DSLR for the evening length stuff. Um, but you know, I just, I love the versatility of it. It's portable. You can change your lenses. You can swap things out to really get the look that you're going for. Um, and it is relatively inexpensive, relatively, you know? So, I mean, you go into like cinema cameras and it's, I, I start crying every time I look at the prices, <laughs> um, you know? So, and I do think, you know, like I, I get really into gear sometimes and it really is, you know, you have to know how to use the equipment and you can get away with very inexpensive stuff. I happen to just like the expensive toys and I, I can justify it with my business some um, often. But uh, I yeah, I just like DSLRs because they're portable, they're flexible and they're very powerful. Yeah, I can I, I shoot on DSLR as well and you've sort of laughed me in the DSLR experience these years, but just to speak to you when I first got into I don't laugh at you. I'm very impressed with I didn't say laugh, I said lapped me. You, you Oh lapped the past. Um, gotcha. You would never laugh at me, right? Um, not in public. <laughs> not in public, thank you. Um, 
you know, DSLRs really changed the game for a uh, consumer level video quality, I think. Um, and I, <laughs> I can speak to uh, still shooting in the studios uh, a long time ago on VHS tape was the way we were still documenting and recording ourselves. Um, digital really wasn't highly available yet. And then the innovation of uh, just digital video was huge. Uh, having flip cameras that you could have with you that were portable would consume. Uh, you know, gigabytes, hopefully, or a lot of megabytes of, of video footage for you in studio. But the DSLR was the, the first bridge of getting, um, you know, professional quality in terms of the lenses that you were going to be able to put on a camera and making that jump from, which is what all cinematography is. If you're really interested in that, you, you've got to, it's the glass oftentimes that is so much more important, the lenses themselves than the body of the camera. And so uh, a lot of investment ends up going into that. But Finally, things lined up, you know, the prices of these cameras, these lenses, the, the sensors, they all came down to that consumer level. You know, uh, average people could start uh, saving up and buying this equipment and you were getting really high quality out of it uh, that we hadn't seen before. And it, it has evened out, I think, this platform for independent artists and independent filmmakers to start um, we still have to be very smart. We don't have all the bells and whistles, you know, that you'll have on a movie set. Um, but if you're really smart and you have the right equipment, it's it's really even the playing field of the kind of things we can create. And we get this cinematic look. We get the cinematic quality. We're shooting in the appropriate frame rates, and we have uh, control of all the elements that we need in a real camera to to get the best footage possible. And so, um, for those of you who are interested, I think that's something we can advocate for in DSLR and why we're shooting it and why it might be something you want to look into. I don't think you have to jump into it right away. Um, I, I don't know what you, did you shoot on anything before a DSLR, Jonathan? Uh, I mean, like my parents had like the digital like point and shoot camera that I might've messed around with a little bit, but the that T3i was kind of my first real foray into video and photo. Yeah, awesome. So um, I wasn't old enough to use VHS stuff. Well, you know, things have changed <laughs> out too. We didn't have, you know, the 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 phones have cameras now oh, that yeah. are unbelievable that we didn't have at that time. So many of you may already be looking through this cinematic lens. You can shoot a lot of really beautiful footage on your phones and there's great tips and tricks to do that. And sometimes that's a great way to learn just some basics that you want to know and then know when that is not suiting your needs. Uh, maybe I want to move up to a DSLR. I want to start expanding what I can do with all the different equipment. Um, yeah. Well, and I think that's a great point of always, um, always using the gear you have until you've like you've you've hit your limit, and then that's when you can justify either renting something or buying the next thing, because it's so easy to be like, oh, I need the best newest thing, and like you really don't. But if you are in a situ situation where like okay, I know like my lens is not wide enough for this for this location and I need to get this thing. Then that's when you can go, okay, I, now I need to rent a wide angle lens. I need to buy a wide angle lens. I need to borrow a wide angle lens or borrow my friend's camera. So I think, yeah, like starting with your phone, that's what everyone should be doing, I think now. And then when you say, okay, but my phone is not that I don't know how to get it from my phone. It's I know it physically cannot do this, then that's when I need to look at something else.